Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unlocking Your Potential, brought to you by Baldwin Tech. I'm your host for today, Gabrielle, and right now I'm thrilled to be joined by John Cusack, who's Business Development Manager at Baldwin. And today we're introducing PQV 4.0, which is the most comprehensive printing inspection software on the market with its automated Delta E color monitoring, cutting edge barcode recognition, micrometer inspection precision, and sensitivity and lighting presets. PQV 4.0 makes it easy to set up a repeatable process with a few simple clicks and take the legwork out of monotonous automation setups. So it's time to let a PQV 4.0 work its magic. And joining us here today to enlighten us on the subject as well as provide any and all industry insights is John. So John, welcome. Hey, Gabby, nice to meet you. Uh, glad to be here today to talk about um, PQV. Absolutely. All right. So to start off, uh, go ahead and give us your name, title, uh, and what it is you do within your role at Baldwin. Okay. So my name is uh, John Cusack. I'm Business Development Manager here at Baldwin uh, Technology. My main area of responsibility is around uh, defect detection platforms. So like the PQV, but we have a couple of other inspection type products as well. So mainly focused on printing industry and quality aspects of Fantastic. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Uh, so tell us about Wizard IQ and also uh, PQV 4.0 as a solution. So just give us a better idea of what that's like. Yeah. So Wizard IQ is sort of a new concept for the PQV inspection platform. So the idea of this um, wizard driven setup is to essentially bring uh, simplicity to a product or a type of product in the market that can be quite complex in its design. Um, so, you know, everybody in the print industry is familiar with um, tools for you know, checking print like web viewers, um, but they're more manual type of products and they're all about having a user kind of, you know, manually look at images and assess them. And it's, you know, it's human perception. It's the speed at which a human can, you know, look at images. But with automated inspection technology, what these platforms do is um, basically take you know billions and billions of pixels of data per second and check that those pixels don't vary uh, throughout the run. And the idea is that every square millimeter of your printed product is assessed automatically for variations. And if those variations exceed some tolerances to notify the operator in real time so you can take corrective action. Uh, the problem with a lot of those uh, platforms is that you know they are very very complex in how they're built uh, they do a lot of very complex things and they typically have suffered from kind of translating that complexity that kind of engineering background into a user experience which makes it you know quite difficult to learn and to really become an expert on so what we're doing with wizard iq is essentially trying to bring some simplicity to these types of products and obviously particularly Baldwin's product um, so, you know, with this uh, PQV 4.0 release, which is the fourth generation of the PQV product, and it's been around now for nearly 25 years, um, the goal is really to try to make the product accessible to any operator at any level of experience within the printing industry. And the idea is that, you know, you don't have to be an expert in print. You certainly don't have to be an expert in uh, inspection technology. You just need to be able to follow a few simple instructions and then, you know, you're enabled to, you know, access to full power of this type of technology. Well, how have you found that the PQV tool set developed for uh, inspecting challenging applications like currency and security uh, been applied for the labels market? Yeah, so again, I mentioned there that the product is about 25 years old and this is its fourth sort of major iteration. Um, so it's become an extremely comprehensive uh, platform of tools. Um, and, you know, in its earlier days, the product was developed for people that were kind of early adopters of print inspection technology. So people that had extremely high end uh, requirements. So people that were in security type of applications like banknote or pharmaceutical applications where, you know, it's extremely important to have every detail on, you know, pharmaceutical label correct, right? So, you know, the dosage levels and things like that. So nobody, you know, you know, gets gets hurt or gets sick or gets killed potentially. So, you know, there was a huge um, demand in the early days of inspection to have sort of the approach of a, a zero defect tolerance and also to just to be able to um, assess very complex features within within the product. So in security, it can be things like um, 
uh, you know, um, hidden or overt features that require special lighting techniques. Um, again, in pharmaceutical, it was a little bit more straightforward from an optics point of view. Simply, there's a lot of data on labels, and all that data needs to be accurate. Um, so, you know, we kind of cut our teeth, if you like, in those very, very demanding early day type of applications. And as you know, the technology matured, you know, started to become more accessible. You know, the the, the kind of the cost of the technology, the price points have come down. And, you know, there's just has been this inherent growth in the demand for, you know, high quality across all uh, printing platforms. So, you know, this type of technology has started to become more commonplace. And the nice thing is because we've been in the business for so long, we're not sort of learning, you know, how to apply our technology across a broad base of applications. We sort of inherently have that capability within our platform and again, what we're doing with Wizard IQ and this next iteration of the PQV is really to try to just take that comprehensive capability within the product and make it very, very accessible to any general labels printers. Well, you mentioned a lot of the broader capabilities uh, this solution has, but uh, more specifically, what can it do for automation? Yeah, so actually the Wizard IQ, essentially it is automation. It's inherently, that's what it's doing. And so from an automation point of view, it's uh, taking tasks that would previously have been very manual, uh, more likely to be um, you know, uh, problematic for a user to either understand or just because there's so many steps in the process, you know, it's very error prone. Um, so when we talk about automation and Wizard IQ, we talk about things like being able to, um, let's say, identify barcodes in a product. So, um, you know, in the past, you can have uh, a label that can have a lot of different features in it. So it can have printed content. It can have uh, just, you know, nice color for pictures. They can also have, you know, different types of codes that can be obviously very critical uh, to the, the quality or the integrity of the label. Um, a lot of systems out there simply look at barcodes as just structures on a printed image, things that are just a bunch of lines or a bunch of squares that are in a particular pattern, but don't necessarily understand that it's actually a code that's carrying information. Certainly doesn't understand what type of code structure it is and what type of information it's trying to convey. Um, with this uh new uh, Wizard IQ training wizard, we actually have new libraries that are able to automatically identify the presence of any code type uh, in the printing industry um, to uh, identify what type of code it is and also to decode it so we know what the data uh, that is in that code so we can actually compare that code potentially to a reference data file to say that, yes, this is not just a barcode of a particular type, but it is actually conveying the correct data set as well. Um, so the automation there is simply um, getting past the need for an operator to uh, identify the position of the code, uh, type in what type of code it is, and even type in the code string that the code um, is representing. So now if you had 10 codes, um, the PQV can find all those codes automatically every time without making any errors. Uh, so you get much, much faster setup time you get much better repeatability in the behavior of the system. You get obviously much better and more predictable output from the device because you know it's always going to find the codes. It's always going to check that the codes are correct. And it is a very complex step that a user no longer needs to understand, doesn't have to interact with the product. And again, it just makes the whole system that a bit more robust. Just a lot more reliable. Well, if you had to... Yeah come up with like maybe some major points in what ways that uh, P PQV uh, 4.0 can help improve workflow ultimately, what would that list kind of look like? Yeah, so actually with the PQV, it's it's part of a kind of a broader workflow. Um, so the PQV is um, sort of a means to an end. So you know, Wizard IQ and this release, um, we're making... Um, the more complex tool is much more easily used and accessible to the user. But then taking it up a level, the PQV is one step in a defect management workflow. So what does that mean? It means that you have multiple points in the, the processing or the converting workflow for taking a label uh, from concept 
you know, to execution and then actually getting it out into the marketplace. So there's a few places within this PQV workflow um, where you, you kind of have the opportunity to improve or layer our technology on top of the label uh, printer's workflow. So the first step is in uh, just proofing the product, verifying that actually what goes to press is correct. So there's a companion to the PQV, which is called our offline uh, proofing product. And it is able to take reference PDF files that are coming from the brand owner that says this is the brand image or logo that we want you to print. This is the, you know, let's say pharmaceutical content or information that we need you to, you know, faithfully reproduce in these labels. And what that product allows us to do is verify that indeed what is about to be printed on press does meet the brand owner's expectation. And then that puts us into the production step, which is where, you know, Mandy, we're talking about the PQV today, which is now doing that 100% automated inspection. So every label that's being produced by the printing press is being, you know, rigorously examined, you know, by um, all of these tools that the PQV has, like we said, this advanced um, barcode uh, verification step, also the ability to do, um, you know, very rigorous color inspection, content inspection, and so forth. Uh, so that gives you um, two things when you're doing uh, inspection with the PQV. First thing is, it's giving you an early warning system. It's telling you when your process starts to drift. So that can be, you know, random issues, random events like ink splashing that might point to something within the press not behaving correctly. You may have some ink viscosity issues. You may have some, you know, just mechanical issue with the press that having that early warning allows the operator to intervene and take action. So what that gives you is your tool for minimizing the amount of waste that you create. Okay, so that's group. That's fantastic. But you do have waste in your system. And that's where the kind of the subsequent parts of the workflow that the PQV is part of then allows you to actually, you know, manage the waste that's in your system, find it, and then remove it to guarantee that your outgoing quality that brand owner is, is what it needs to be. So the second companion to the PQV is a, a defect database, which basically is capturing all of the information and is allowing users to look at that information and then make quality decisions. So they can identify defects of a particular type. They can look at the map of every role and see where all those defects are located so that they can make sort of, you know, tactical decisions about how they're going to manage, you know, the resulting quality. So the idea here is that with the PQV workflow, um, your, you have the potential to deliver defect-free uh, product to your customers or at the very minimum meet your customers' you know, quality requirements so that you're running um, to the highest level of efficiency you can with the equipment that you've got available to you. Well, John, what sets a PQV 4.0 apart from other printing inspection software if there were uh, maybe some major points there? Yeah, I think it's it's different in a few ways. I, I think fundamentally it does a better job. And this kind of goes back to the early days that I mentioned at the beginning, which is that we started off trying to solve very complex problems because that's they, those were the printers that were in need of 100% or automated inspection technology. Uh, so again, I'll use the example of a, of a pharmaceutical uh, printer, but today it can be any printer. It's anybody that's putting content on a label, be it in, you know, human readable format or, or in various different types of codes. Um, the PQV uses um, this approach called object-based processing or inspection. And it is a unique tool in the industry that allows it to essentially and automatically identify uh, every individual character or, or component within the artwork. So if you if, you've, if you're printing a book, it's maybe a bad example, but if you've got a label that's extremely busy with content, if you've got hundreds and hundreds or maybe even thousands of characters on that label, um, you're trying to convey a message. Sometimes it's, um, you know, it's it, it's it's extremely important message. Like if it's a pharmaceutical label, it could be about, you know, how many of these particular tablets you should take in a day, as an example, or it can just be a message from, from the brand owner. But regardless of what the content is, you want the content to be correct. And uh, the PQV's approach is to be able to identify every character on a label and track them completely independently of each other. And what that addresses is... Um, a sort of a limit, if you like, in the printing 
uh, approach, which is that normally print labels are made up of multiple colors. They're not just usually black ink on a white substrate. They're usually, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight colors that are um, being combined together to create uh, some some artwork, some graphics, some content. Um, but they also have tolerances. So a printer um, will run to a registration tolerance, which means that each individual color can move around with respect to the others. But as long as it's within a reasonable amount of movement, the resulting label will, you know, be good. Um, but because there is that inherent variability, um, a lot of inspection systems have to kind of build that variability into their tolerances. So they know things will move around and therefore they kind of have to lower their sensitivity to allow for that movement, which means that sometimes very small defects that are very critical, like a missing period, again, on a dosage information, can actually be smaller than the amount of movement that the colors can actually do with respect to each other and therefore can be missed by those systems. But the PQV's approach is to actually find that period when the system is training and then track that period as it moves around, completely independently of any other character on on the label. So if that period does disappear or become corrupted, the PQV can see it. So it's just that fundamental ability to see more than what everybody else is doing because um, it's good to be able to do 100% inspection. It's better to be able to find everything that you're actually concerned about. And that's where the PQV can be particularly strong. Um, I think another big differentiator for the PQV in the industry is its ability to be a very practical tool. Um, and again, this is from, you know, probably a quarter of a year, a quarter of a century, should I say, of kind of, you know, just learning, you know, what is needed in, in print for inspection technology. Uh, again, in some of the early days, you know, on back 20 years now, um, inspection systems uh, could struggle with the content that, that was being presented to it and could occasionally, um, you know, pick up on things that are not really defects and become a bit of a nuisance, okay? So some of that kind of uh, can still persist where inspection systems, because you know, the tech, the underlying technology, you know, the speed of the camera technology has, has increased so much recently that there are a lot of um, systems available on the market that are, you know, taking very, very high resolution images. But those images are extremely sensitive to very, very small things that are not really defects. And what happens is some of those systems can, again, just become a nuisance factor where they're constantly triggering on non-issues. And the result is that um, you end up with just a huge amount of noise, which means that real defects get lost in that noise and can't be seen by the operator. And, you know, often operators will become detuned to that noise. They'll essentially switch off and not pay attention to the system, and the system has lost its value. What the PQV does is it takes an approach of being able to understand variabilities within the, the artwork, like I mentioned with the object-based processing. It has learned to sort of uh, master the inherent variability that's in the printing process and to to not trigger on it, but still find things that are smaller than those variations that are critical. But it has a very uh, clever tool where it can actually be trained um, on particular types of defects or base. Essentially, it can learn to ignore different things. And that doesn't mean mask it out and hide it and don't inspect a given area. It means be basically learn or, you know, essentially, you know, dynamically learn um, a, a, an issue or a variation that's really not something that the operator cares about. And when it learns that and sees that that variation continues, it won't present that issue to the operator anymore. But if that variation changes or becomes slightly worse, then it will intervene again and let the operator know something has sort of deteriorated. So the idea here is that we want to make sure at the end of the day, that we only alert the operator to things that the operator cares about. And then it becomes a very, very useful tool. It becomes a practical tool that the operator can get very good value from. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the color, color monitoring capabilities. What would you say are some of the benefits of using automated uh, Delta E color monitoring? Right. Yeah. So, so with, with the introduction of Wizard IQ, we've basically taken a feature that's been in the product for probably 15 or 20 years now, but we've sort of taken it to the next level. Um, 
So one critical aspect of, for printers is um, color fidelity and, and reproducing colors the way the brand owners expect them to, to be. Okay, so you can have brand owners that will specify a thing called the Delta E tolerance, which is basically how much the color that the printer prints can vary from the brand owner color. So, you know, maybe a bad example might uh, is Coke Red or, or Pepsi Blue. Okay, those brands are extremely strong brands in the market. They have a global presence, and they're present across many different media. So they can be on printed media, like labels. They can be on the side of a, a building on a billboard. They can be on a truck. They can be in um, digital media. And throughout all of those different platforms, Coke Red, Pepsi Blue, have to be those colors as they are specified. And if the tolerance isn't met, um, that's a big problem for the printer. So... Um, a lot of inspection systems today offer a Delta E monitoring functionality that will alert the operator if the color drifts outside of the tolerance that the brand owner has specified. The problem with how that technology or that functionality is being applied today is that it requires um, the user to have a very good understanding of what is a valid color measurement location and then to have the user take the time to actually go and select the locations that they want to measure color. So what that means is your operator has to be skilled. It means you need to take additional time to make sure you actually choose locations to measure color. And it requires a human not to make a mistake, right? So, I mean, a, a, another dodgy example might be, I want to select a measurement of color in the middle of a barcode. So that's a bad place to measure color because it's actually two different colors. You're talking about black lines and a white background, and it's not a valid color measurement location. So there are rules around that. And, you know, people who are responsible for quality that don't run the printing press, but are at a higher level that use color measurement devices and technologies, um, they understand that they're trained to know what's a good place to take a measurement, but a press operator may not be. So what we've done with Wizard IQ is we've essentially automated that whole thing. So when you're training on a given job, it doesn't matter what the product is. It doesn't matter if the PQV has never seen the job before. The PQV can identify all the valid color measurement locations within the artwork and will automatically um, start to measure their color against a global tolerance that is um, by default set up in the system or can be adjusted by the user depending on the quality of the work that's being used. So what it's giving you is the ability to have, like we said at the beginning, have a very unskilled or low-skilled operator, somebody who doesn't really know anything about color in this case, use the tool in a much more comprehensive way than any skilled color measurement um, scientist has been able to do before because now you can literally measure thousands of color locations automatically all the time, very repeatedly to uh, very specific tolerances. So you get basically, again, you know, industry leading, you know, color monitoring uh, capabilities. Well, what type of reports uh, does PQV 4.0 generate? So for PQV 4.0, um, it uh, has the ability to generate reports on a couple of different levels. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, we've got this workflow that PQV sits in. So there's reporting that happens real time on the PQV, and that's where we get defect alerts. We get information about you know, how the good count or the bad count of labels that have happened. So you get a kind of a real time reporting where the operator can take corrective action, try to minimize the waste that's being produced. Another cool thing about that real time information with the with the defect counts or label counts is that you can actually see how much good material you've already printed because uh, a given order will be for a certain number of labels and without having a real time feedback as to how many good labels you've produced most printers will default to over printing on every order because they know there is going to be waste in their process but they don't yet know how much waste is going to be on any given job so they'll you know consistently overrun and those overruns are essentially inefficiencies that are uh, that they're introducing into their workflow to avoid a situation where they come up short in an order and may have to go back to press, which is again another big expense. So 
the the reporting in that sense on the PQV in real time is allowing uh, the printer to run much much closer to the the target numbers that they need to produce, um, and it's minimizing the waste. So you take you, you limit your risk by reducing the amount of waste you've got in your workflow, but you increase your equipment's operating efficiency because you actually can finish any given job faster because you're not just going to run 110% of the order. You might now only have to run 103 or 104% depending on the waste levels you're generating because you know what you're doing in real time. So you're getting you know much closer to the action. And then later on in the workflow with, with the actual standard reports that you get in the mapping system, you're able to pull up a a role report, uh, and in that report, uh, you can decide what content you want to include in the report. So, for example, if you have specific types of defects that you want to print an image off in the report, you can do that. Um, so if there's something that is particularly persistent or something that recurs multiple times um, you know, across different types of products that you really want to do a root cause on, these reports can be very valuable in, in helping kind of just communicate, get that message across your organization. Here's an issue that we're facing. This is what it looks like. We've got images of it. Now let's try to see if we can figure out and root cause it. Um, so that's obviously very important for kind of the longer term process improvement. Um, and then, you know, just, just general statistical information you get because you're seeing everything, you know, when it happened, where it happened, how many of them happened, what type of defect it was. And you get to be able to um, kind of stand back from that uh, data and kind of look at it at a level where, you know, you can really use it to make some business decisions, to be able to see um, sort of the opposite of root cause, but to try to see, you know, where are you performing well and why? So, you know, you may have, you may have particular presses that run very well. You know, you get low defect counts, or you don't see many issues. So what, what's going on there that things are working so well? And can I learn from that and then try to apply that elsewhere in my business to try to you know, make improvements across the platform? Do you have any last thoughts, John, uh, that you'd like to leave for the audience in terms of maybe what we can expect next from future podcast episodes? Yeah, I think uh, what's nice, uh, I think, in the last couple of years is we've really started to see kind of an acceleration in, in, in the amount of new features and functionalities that we're bringing out into the product. And actually, since since we've completed um, the, the PQV 4.0 kind of internal launch, if you like, we're now sort of externalizing that and bringing it to the market. But we're already, you know, chipping away some other cool features that we've, uh, we've been working on. So, you know, there's going to be new features around, you know, defect enhancement, uh, you know, providing tools to allow operators to to find defects that are extremely subtle to visualize on a system. So, you know, making the product a better tool for things like um, inspecting varnishes, um, for being able to um, visualize very, very low contrast defects like uh, scumming or very low contrast color defects. Um, but then, just a little bit kind of longer term then as well, we're going to continue to um, uh, make big enhancements around our workflow, actually. So we've kind of taken with this launch uh, a very strong focus on the inspection product itself, but we're also um, going to look more at the workflow side of things as well. So we're going to make a lot of enhancements there as well in the coming months um, where we expect to you know, bring in um, just better tools for accessing the data, filtering the data, and really kind of diving into the specifics that you need to understand to make, you know, make those business decisions we've been talking about. Um, beyond that, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of stuff coming, you know, camera technology gets faster, PCs get faster. It just enables us to do more at the same time it takes to print a label, you know, than, than we had yesterday. And that's the nice thing about the technology that we're doing is that it is, it's moving much, much faster than the traditional printing technologies that it's servicing. So, you know, printing speeds haven't, you know, dramatically increased in the last 10 years, but processing power certainly has. And the ability just to add more intelligence and more analysis of the images to kind of give you better quality data is what I think you can see, you know, to, you know, to continue to evolve here as we move forward. All right. Well, that wraps up the conversation for today. So thank you, John, for joining us on today's podcast to discuss Wizard IQ and PQV 4.0 as a solution. Thank you, Gabby. It was my pleasure. 
Nice talking with you. Take care. As always, if you want to learn more, please visit baldwintech.com and look for this podcast wherever it is you get your podcasts at. I've been your host, Gabrielle. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in.